Hello everybody, I'm at the Colorado Center for the Blind and I'm speaking with with Dan and he's going to uh, help me and other teachers understand how to make uh, classroom material accessible for people with visual impairments and who are blind. The center is located at 2233 West Shepherd Avenue in Littleton, Colorado, 80120. And the phone number is 303-778-1130 if you'd like to contact the center for any other resources or uh, information that may help you in your classroom. The mission statement for the center at the Colorado Center of the Blind, we expect that blindness does not need to be limiting to in any way. With our positive attitude, we have revolutionized the way the public thinks about blindness and have created vibrant programs that change negative myths into positive realities. The Colorado Center for the Blind is the leader in independence training for blind people of all ages. All training methods empower blind people to learn the skills and build the confidence to be successful personally and professionally. In addition, we offer a variety of training courses to teach professionals how to work effectively with blind people. And I'm going to now turn the table over to conversation over to Dan, and he's going to talk to us about uh, a two layered conversation, starting off with what techniques, strategies, technology can teachers use to uh, make the class more accessible for students with visual impairments and uh, who are blind. And then the second part of the question will be, how can teachers be involved with the Center of the Blind and engage their students to absorb the resources here to make their learning a more powerful experience. Okay, Dan, thank you for being here with me. Sure. Uh, thanks for asking. Um, you know, Justin, with the question about um, how to make things more accessible in the classroom, how, how to, uh, I don't need to tell teachers, you know, to plan because teachers are the best planners there are. But, um, for example, one of the first things if you got a student who's blind, and when I talk about blind and visually impaired students, I'm just going to say blind. Um, that's kind of how we approach it at the center. That includes anybody that has any kind of difficulty with vision that needs um, needs accommodations or um, adaptations for for learning. One of the things is being prepared to verbalize whatever uh, is going on in the classroom. And the, the, the great example is um, you know math. You know when math is being written on the board. Um, you know the, ins the instructor really needs to be saying what they're doing because if they aren't the student who can't see it is just totally lost now one of the advantages is, is that there are a lot of other students maybe in the class that will benefit from the sort of dual learning mode you know hearing it and seeing it at the same time so um so that's one thing and just being aware of that and being able to do that um my classic example was the teacher asked a question that wrote the answer on the board and walked away significantly. This is in graduate school, by the way. Mm -hmm. And uh, and I, you know, um, so do you want to read it to me, please? <laughs> uh, <laughs> right. Because it's like you know, everybody else going, oh, oh, and I'm like, do you mind? Do you mind telling me what it is? Um, so that's one way. Um, the other, another way is, um, and in fact, in, in, in planning, you know, I'm thinking about. What things are going to be delivered in terms of in what formats? Um, print stuff for students may need to be, you know, um, in Braille. Um, students may use computers, but if it's delivered in electronic formats, then it needs to be in a format that's accessible, um, such as not like an image file. Not, um, PDFs are often not accessible, um, but you know, uh, things that are in Word and so on can be easily be read with screen reader if the student is using that kind of technology. Or with a Braille note taker, um, if they have that. So, you know, to deliver that stuff in advance, in particular, so students can get it before the class starts and not as an afterthought, you know. Um, because mm -hmm. if um, you get the handouts later, then you're kind of um, at a loss in terms of what everybody else is following along with. Right. Um, but yeah, 
beyond that, I'm not sure um, if there's a lot of other specific things, you know, in terms of classroom stuff that you need to do, um, unless there's, you know, websites and so on that you're going to send people to that being aware that those may or may not be accessible and trying to think about those things in advance or, or check with the technology folks or the student to see, um, to see about those kinds of things. So. Okay. Okay. Thank you. And how about teachers having students uh, uh, visit the center? Okay. Uh, uh, blind or students uh, without a visual impairment? Sure. So what I'll say is a couple things. We have uh, year-round programs for, uh, um, for kids. And so right now, on June 19th, we have 16 elementary age kids here. Um, they're almost all from the Denver metro area. We have one kid whose family came down uh, to spend three weeks in the, in the area. Uh, of, they came from Montana, actually, um, because they, they wanted to get this opportunity for their kid, their child who's small and blind, um, you know, I think he's like seven years old, I think, um, to be in this program. So, um, because there's a lot of fun learning things that kids get to do and they get to meet other other kids who um, you know, also have, you know, who are blind. And also some of, the, of our staff, have, we have one of our um, recent graduates from the center who's 19 years old, is one of the, um, one of the uh, volunteers in that age group. So they're those elementary kids. Then we have another 24 students, middle school through um, students that have just graduated from high school. That are in the program. That's our that's our summer program. We go for two months. Um, we have a lot of things going on with that, and we can we often can use some volunteers with those kinds of with different kinds of activities. Um, we have um, year-round programs for youth and, um, that involve doing various STEM activities with the blind the blind kids actually get their hands on kinds of things, um, and we can do workshops for for teachers as well. Um, actually work with specifically with some um, teachers for the visually impaired that are doing um, for example the confidence camp stuff with the elementary kids so just call in the main number and um, ask for me Dan Burke or Brent Patron who's our youth coordinator um, and you know we can find ways to get people involved in doing some different things so. wonderful thank you Dan you bet. and they were absolutely Appreciate having a phone call from you and uh, and having your participation at this center. Uh, it is a nonprofit center. It is funded by su supporters and the federal government, I would imagine. And any other resources that a teacher that can bring to this community, uh, I'm sure Dan and Brett could find a very useful way of interpreting and providing uh, the, the, your resource to their community. Okay. Well, thank you, Dan. Thank I appreciate you. the interview and the process and learning more about the community here. And I look forward to uh, evolving as a teacher and, 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 and being uh, a better volunteer here. I, 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 that's something that is I'm going to calendar, calendar into my future is being more uh, 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 participatory in the processes that happen here at the Colorado Center for the Blind. Great. We'd love to have you.